Today, I'm eager to talk to you about endodontic diagnosis and specifically, I'd like to talk to you about the radiographic exam. In previous episodes, we've talked about clinical findings and vital pulp testing. So the third phase of the endodontic exam is the radiographic examination. And of course, this is really important because this is showing us things we can't see with our naked eye. And I want to bring into this uh, discussion immediately uh, the importance of getting well angulated films. We need to use aiming devices so that we get one-to-one -one images so there's little distortion. And we need to be using uh, radiographic machines that give us good contrast because the radiographic exam is our eyes, if you will, and it is, in fact, how we see so many things that we otherwise wouldn't know. I would be a little amiss if I didn't mention, when we're talking about radiographic examination, the importance of thinking about CBCT. Cone beam computer uh, tomography is something that's been used in medicine for decades, but there's quite a resurgence of it, if you will, uh, in dentistry and it came about primarily with the advent of the implants. So many people got CBCT machines to better understand where the bone was, where the important anatomy was to eliminate or avoid putting a fixture into direct contact with an anatomical structure. So we saw them begin to move with periodontal offices, oral surgeons, and some radiology clinics, but now we're seeing some well-trained endodontist and some well-trained general dentist alike using CBCT to get three-dimensional radiographic information. This would be the highest level of diagnostics one could hope for. So you'll see more of this and even if you don't have it, there's professionals in your community that can do this kind of an exam and they can use this kind of technology so you can better serve your patients. Let's look at the importance of the radiographic exam. So let's get started. Regarding the radiographic exam, I feel it's always important to take three well-angulated radiographs from different horizontal positions. I'm perfectly clear that a single film can show you a lesion of endodontic origin. And coupled with a vital pulp test, you could probably condemn the tooth and have complete confidence in your diagnostics. However, you're taking the second and third angles for you, the doctor, because in these different horizontal angles, you're going to be able to see much more than a single film alone. Many of you that know me know that over 90% of my practice is performing non-surgical retreatment procedures, meaning that out of every thousand patients I see, 900 of them have already had endodontic treatment and it's failing. It has been critical in my career to move the cone up to 30 degrees mesial, then come back to your straight on baseline and move the cone horizontally up to 30 degrees distally because these three views will show you much more information than a single film alone. And by having more information, you're going to be able to communicate more clearly and more precisely to your patient. And the better you examine it and diagnose it, all treatment plan that follows is based on your initial impressions. So why don't we build value to the patient and let them know why we're taking different views so that we can better serve their needs. So here's the aiming device. And you can see that with digital, the film is instantly displayed on the monitor. And I would say, here's your mesial view. Now in this view, you can see how your buccal roots have been thrown across the palatal. So the palatal is the root on the far right, and on the far left is the distal buccal, and the MBs in between. But notice in this view that you can read the width and the length, and you can begin to appreciate the curvatures and recurvatures of the various systems that are held with inside each given root. Well, that's one view, but how about getting the other view? And I mentioned getting the distal view because that'll throw your MB root anterior and it is now the root that's on the far right. 
So your maxillary MB root on the right frees it up and it's a good working film picture to take when you have an instrument in the tooth because oftentimes the distal view frees up the MB root and we can come shallower and underneath the malar bone so we can read that root very, very clearly when we're doing working length determination. And of course, you do need the straight on view. And this is the classic view where you break the contacts, you see the crest of bone, you, you identify the coal areas mesially and distally. And you oftentimes will have that buccal root framing in between the buccal roots, the palatal root. And you can see that palatal root with its little recurvature right in the last three millimeters. So these three views for me represent critical views that you want to have so you can better appreciate what lies ahead. If you roll all these views and look at them separately and then together, you begin to see concavities, you begin to see root curvatures, the length of the roots, you can see pulp chambers, you can see the proximity of root ends to sinuses, you can see the ends of the roots proximity to each other, and you can see the dental work that's been accomplished. So there's so much that we look at. And these three views, I could talk about them for 10 or 15 minutes and make it interesting. I won't. But look at any given tooth in each different view and notice how different it looks and how you can much more clearly in some views read and interpret the apical extent of the root precisely, whereas in other views, it's not so easy to see. So these three views together would be something that I would think would be useful to initiate any treatment whatsoever. Okay, so I want to close out on my radiographic examination as part of the three phases of the endodontic diagnostic procedure. Oftentimes you're getting your films first because somebody says it hurts and they point somewhere and if they can at least tell you the quadrant you might take a cursory look with your mouth mirror and you might do a little bit of a clinical exam or you might do a very thorough one, but at some point you're probably getting your films pretty early. And then once you get your films, you can see what you can't see with your visual oral exam. And so you have now your radiographic exam, your visual oral exam, and now you'll probably think, let's roll out uh, the proper pulp testing equipment and let's do a cold or a hot test to bring in the diagnostics. So I think if you begin to look at your patients thoughtfully and carefully and treat them as family and respectful, you should do an endodontic exam on every single patient before you pick up the handpiece and touch the tooth. And if you do that, you'll begin to appreciate that some of these teeth that you're going to do crown prep on really are teeth that have lingering discomfort to cold. They're right on the tipping point of the cusp, so to speak. And what you would notice is if you went ahead and did the crown prep procedure, they probably will exacerbate, flare up, and need to have endodontics. And if you would have just done the pulp testing scheme, perhaps you would have talked to the patient about intervention and intercepting the pulp and doing root canal treatment initially and first before doing crown prep. So that's what I'd like to leave you with is the importance of treatment planning for no surprises. And how you treatment plan for no surprises is the differential endodontic examination.